Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah prior to the sitting in this short uh, discussion if you will I mentioned some things about uh, Abdullah al-Faisal and we gave some of the evidence from his speech and as I mentioned there are books and some works dedicated to clarifying his Akita from his own statements. And it still ama ceases to amaze me that there are people that still follow and make ta'zim of his minhaj, of his methodology, his methodology of understanding Islam. That there are people when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wilillahi alhamd, has displaced him for a time. We don't know how long. I don't even know which country he's in prison. And hopefully Allah will bless him with guidance to where he'll remove himself from the evil that he has been upon for many decades. But when I see the response of some of the people who blind follow him, and I would definitely say blind follow because they never come with ilm and fiqh. Never. And I've known countless brothers who were affected and infected Affected meaning that they were affected, they had some effects from his dawah. Infected in that they were diseased because they did not have any evidence, they had no basic foundation of Islam. And I can promise you, or not promise you, I can testify that many of the individuals, some of them couldn't even read Fatiha properly. Some of them were not mustahik. to be the imam for salat or otherwise, but yet out on their tongue they would freely make takfir of some of the a'imma of Ahl Sunnah in this time, like Imam bin Baz, wa al-Albani, wa bin Uthaymi, like nothing, like they were drinking water, but yet they couldn't recite Fatiha like they were, as they should be able to do, as Muslims, especially Muslims who've been Muslim for years. And so I've seen the ignorance propagated and that there was no benefit except for destruction was the end result of his dawah. And if you look at his dawah, and again, I was never a student of his, but I had many of his tapes and it was really propagated in the locality, in the place where I was from in America. And I've known Tekfetis who even made hijra to the UK to sit under him. And some of them came back and were even had to become intelligence agencies for the extremism. And even one of them, he told me himself, he said that when I asked Faisal why he doesn't leave to go to the front line, because this individual wanted to go to Afghanistan. He wanted to go at the time of the Taliban and fight and do all these kind of things. He was, at, he was practicing what he preached, even if it was misguidance. He said that Faisal said that he had to rain, remain back. Why would he have to remain back? Why is it that his dawah focuses the attention on the land of Tawheed? That even if you disagree and even if you want to make your claims about and making takfir of the leaders as you do, why is it that that's in your gun sight, but yet many of you pledge allegiance to the flag in non-Muslim countries? This is what you do on a daily basis. You pay taxes, you... Uh, support those governments, but yet you don't want to support the Bilal al-Tawheed. So that lets me think that there's something questionable about your aqidah, about your itiqad, about your minhaj, your methodology. And when we look at some of the most severe takfiris like Abu Hamza Misri, I'm talking about in the Western world, not talking about those others. But in the Western world, Abu Hamza Misri, Abu Qatada Filistini, and Faisal, and I would say Faisal was the most reckless, and I spent several years of my life studying those individuals and going in, and it's in my master's research. I spent time combing through their lectures, translating, going in, especially Abu Qatada required translation because he didn't have English. But the others, it was just reckless. It was from reckless to more reckless, and Faisal is the most reckless and deviant amongst them. Those other ones, at least they had a bit more restraint. And depending on their level of their knowledge, with Abu Qatali being the most knowledgeable amongst those takfiris. And with that being said, I want to ask, why is it 
that most of those people can never have a discussion with you. Either they threaten you with violence or they make tekfir of you. They consider you not to be Muslim and why don't you become Muslim? And that doesn't fade us. It doesn't phase us at all. However, and I'm not going to put this out as a threat or a challenge, but I don't see any of those people coming to my face around the world. They can find me in America. They can find me in Saudi Arabia. Wherever they want to find me, I'm willing to discuss my Islam with them. And if they want to make tekfir of me, that's on them. And we hope that I will have restraint and deal with them appropriately. But if not, wulilai alhamd. So I just want to say that it's very important when we comb through the material of Faisal, we will find that it, I, I, I don't ever recall him ever teaching about anything really much about Islam, like the pillars of Iman, the pillars of Islam. He could have. I don't know, because I, I only focus on his countless tapes of takfir. His countless tapes that it seems like that was the only dawah, like literally those guys, most of those guys, his students, weren't people of known for ibadah and getting up in the night prayer. There are people who known for missing the fajr prayer, committing adultery, and I'm telling the truth, and doing all kind of crimes against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but yet making takfir of other Muslims and causing fitna in communities. Those are the people that we're talking about. And we don't see the thamarat al-ilm. We don't see that his tarbiyah, that he was teaching people how to better come closer to Allah. How if they meet Allah, they'll be asked the questions of, a gra of the grave. Men rabbuk, ma dinak, men nabiyak. These are the questions of the grave. Who is your Lord? Uh, what is your religion? Who was your prophet? They won't be asked, what is your position on King so-and-so? What is your mokif, your position on President so-and-so, is so-and-so ruling by the Sharia or not? Do you, you won't be asked these questions. So my advice is really, sincerely, humble yourselves, go back to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and don't busy yourself with the major masail, the major issues, before the minor issues. Make sure that you know how to practice your Islam because if you die in that state, in a state of being ignorant and making taqlid of a deviant, takfiri, khariji. What, how do you think you're going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about them, al khawarij kilab al nar They're the dogs of the hellfire. And that should illustrate that, meaning that they have a very low station in the hellfire. Now who of us wants to go to the hellfire? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِن تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرَدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you differ over something, so if you have a problem, فَرَدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ How do you return it back to Allah and His Messenger? You return it back to Allah by going to the Qur'an. And you return it back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by going back to the Sunnah. And if you go to the Sabeel al-Mu'mineen, the Salaf of this Ummah, you'll see that some of them, they made takfir of the Khawarij. But all of them said the Khawarij were madhmum, and the Khawarij in the past weren't known for ulama. And the Khawarij of this day are not known for ulama mu'tabirin. Most of those guys were young when they were making their fatwa to, to cause fitna in Algeria and to go to this country and go to this country, why they sat on welfare in some of these countries. They sat comfortably there, talking about hijra, talking about jihad, talking about these major masail, but they were surely very comfortable sitting in those countries where they could, and most those three that I'm talking about, the biggest tech videos that I know of in the West were from the UK. So they had a very handsome welfare stipend, and they didn't want to leave that. They didn't want to go back to those other countries. And you could say, oh, they were going to be persecuted, they were going to be this, they were going to be that. So when is it permissible for them to seek refuge under those people they supposedly hate? And those people who they want fitna for? I don't see that in the divine text. I don't see that in the minhaj of the Salaf. I don't even see that in the minhaj of the original Khawarij. These tekfiris of these days, they have new the Wabit, new criterion. And I want to ask, I want you to ask yourself, did Faisal ever teach you about the, the Wabit of Tekfir that are mentioned in the books, that are mentioned from the classical scholars? 
mentioned by Imam Noawi and, and, and uh, Imma, Imam Ghazali even mentioning these things, mentioning these principles of takfir. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, who he likes to quote, did he ever read, read you the rest of the pages to, so that you can have a, a, a tasawwur sahih, a correct uh, look at these masail? Or did he just entice you with desires? Entice you to make takfir of the whole dunya? Are you the only Muslims? I don't think so. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with a class with the bat. And may Allah protect us from the harm of the evil ones and guide them. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد